Hi, Bridge family. So excited to finally be with you guys. Palm Sunday, one of my favorite Sundays of the whole entire year. Here with uh, part of the Hamilton family. Edie, can you say hi to everybody? <laughs> good morning bridge fam we're so glad to be with you today uh in your living room in your bedroom wherever you are we're so glad that you are here but hey i also want to thank god for being with mm. us too um because it's a privilege to be in the presence of god and i always want to be thankful whenever mm. we are in his presence um so uh let's i'm gonna pray and if you can just pray right along with me father uh we love you and Father, we thank you that you want to be with your people. God, I thank you that you're not limited to a church building, God, that your presence and your power isn't limited to a, a normal place of congregation. But mm. God, I thank you that you are wherever you're invited into. So Lord, we invite you into our homes. Lord, we invite you into our bedrooms. We invite you into our cars. We invite you into wherever else we find ourselves mm. today. Lord, we love you. God, we thank you for wanting to be with us. Mm -hmm. um, and God, I ask that we would see you move today. God, that we would feel your tangible presence mm -hmm. today. And Lord, more than anything, we ask that you would be glorified today, that, your, that, that our worship would pl be pleasing to you today. We love you, Lord. And we thank you for the opportunity to be in your presence. Mm -hmm. uh, we pray this in Jesus', in name. Jesus name. Amen. 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 So we're going to continue Amen. with some time of worship. And so I encourage you guys to stand up uh, as we worship. Go ahead and get out off your couches, out of your chairs, wherever you're in. And let's lift our hands to heaven. Let's sing out. Let's praise his name. Let's give God all, all that we have this morning. Um, so we love you guys. And let's continue with some worship. Good morning, Bridge family. Welcome to Sunday service. I hope you guys are having an amazing morning with your families. Please join us as we worship the Lord. song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. Oh. Yeah. 
at the end of all of this, Jesus. Yes. Yes, Jesus. Come on, church. Let's proclaim this today. Weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. When the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph My God will never fail Come on y'all, let's sing that out Oh my God will never fail I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you Lord I'm gonna see a victory, I'm gonna see a victory, for the battle belongs to you, Lord. Oh, oh. Yes. Come on guys, there's power in the mighty name. There's power mighty name of Jesus. Every war he wages, he will win. Oh, and I'm not backing down from any giants. I know how the story ends. Yes, I
over our homes. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. Come on, y'all. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. Come on, one more time. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Yes. The battle belongs to the Lord. So, church, today, I just want to pray over us really quickly. Lord, I thank you and I praise you for just sustaining us through this time, Lord God, for rejuvenating us and for keeping us close and connected. Lord God, I thank you for the people at the bridge, the family that we have at the bridge. I pray that the word that you have for us today would just, um, just penetrate our hearts, Lord God, and that we would be reminded that all good things come from you and that you take anything that was meant for evil and you turn it for good so we thank you god we praise you that we have built our lives on a strong foundation and we will not be shaken we love you church we hope that you have an amazing amazing day thank you thank you thank you for tuning in amen hello bridge family this is pastor mark we are so glad that you're here this sunday that you chose to be a part of the bridge virtual church today God's got a word for you today, so be prepared. But man, it's good to see you and be a part of this with you. We want to make sure that you stay connected with what's happening at the bridge. Even during this time, God is on the move. And you can stay connected through our social media accounts, through the Bridge Facebook page, the Bridge Instagram page, and obviously through our YouTube channel, the Bridge Church VP. Man, stay connected. God is on the move and doing things. And we want to make sure that you're aware of what's happening at the bridge. And now we have an opportunity, a time for giving. And you can give three ways at The Bridge. You can give through The Bridge website, thebridgebp.com. You can give through our Bridge app. And if you choose to give by mail, feel free to email me, mark, M-A-R-K, at thebridgebp.com. And we'll send out to you the church office address to be able to send those checks to but when I think about giving, I think about a scripture, it's Acts 20, verse 35. And in that scripture, Paul, talking to the church, says this. He says, remember what the Lord said, it is better to give than to receive. What I love about that scripture and how it sets my heart right is in this. Paul was talking to the church and what he desired for them to know was this. That in receiving man, we get the blessings of God and see the goodness of God. But it's in giving that we get to be the hands and feet of God. And while I love to receive gifts from my family and, and receive the things that God has for me, it is a profound privilege when I get to be the hands and feet of God and give to those who are in need. So can we have our hearts set on that as we give today? And let me pray over the offering. Father, I thank you for this, that we're your children, and you invite us into this adventure to be able to be your hands and feet in the world. And then in this opportunity to give, Lord God, we get to see your work in the world through us. What a privilege that is. We thank you, God, that you provide for us, that you give us abundance and you care for us. But we delight in this, God, that you give us opportunities to see it done in other people's lives. Thank you for the privilege and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. We have a great thing coming up. We have Easter coming. Somebody should give a shout. April 12th is Easter Sunday, and we are having, obviously, Easter service. But what you don't know until now is this. We are going to have our very first Bridge Sunrise service on Easter Sunday. That's right. At 6 a.m. Easter Sunday, we're having a sunrise service. So, man, get your, your coffee, your family, your blanket, however it is you're coming to church that day virtually. Uh, come ready to hear the Word of God. 
What an amazing thing we get to do to have a sunrise service on Easter Sunday. Man, it's gonna be good, so don't miss it. We will also be having our normal 10 a.m. service on Sunday, Easter Sunday. Uh, but don't miss the sunrise service, it's going to be amazing. And while we are in a virtual church mode right now, uh, we wanna make sure that we're building community. And one of the ways our youth pastor, Pastor Amanda and the youth team are doing it is youth hangouts. They're having youth hangouts on sun, uh, excuse me, Thursdays at 4 p.m. And so if you'd like the Zoom ID for that, to be a part of that hangout, feel free to email Pastor Amanda at amanda at thebridgebp.com. And speaking of community, we're also having Bridge at Night. We're having gatherings on Thursday nights at 9.30 p.m. Two weeks ago, we had a, a person come in who was a personal trainer and gave us great insight on how to stay healthy while we're doing these stay-at-homes. And last week, we had two uh, family and marriage counselors, very profound people in that area, who gave us insight on how to have a relationship, how to have community, how to decompress, and how to kind of walk through the health of being able to stay at home. So Thursday nights at 9.30, we're having our bridge at nights. The Zoom ID for that is 370-814-129. Thursdays at 9.30, don't miss out on that. And our last community opportunity for this week is Kids Church is having a Zoom call Wednesday at 4 p.m. In order to get that information, the Zoom ID for it, please email Melina, M-E-L-I-N-A, Melina at thebridgebp.com. God bless you and have a great Sunday service. Hi, Bridge family. So excited to be with you this Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday is honestly one of my favorite Sundays of the year and I so wish that we could be there in person together um, to be able to, to just laugh together and hug together and be family together um, but unfortunately we still are where we are um, but that does not change the fact that God still wants to do something in us and through us and we've still seen miracles happen at our church we've seen people uh, that got married on zoom uh, we've seen people that were still in small groups connecting I've seen marriages get closer together I've seen people that said this I, I, I was on a lot of phone calls this week um, and I heard one family say this, man, it felt like we had a, a, a real church family for the first time. I mean, come on, only God could make, could make family, could make you feel like family in the midst of when you're supposed to be the most isolated. And so church family, I come uh, bringing good news. Our God is still alive. He's still on the throne. He's still doing stuff. And so this, this morning uh, on, on Palm Sunday, I want us to celebrate. Um, this is what we call the beginning of the Holy Week. And so the Holy Week begins on Palm Sunday. And then it ends on what the Christians call Easter Sunday. And so uh, I want to dive into Palm Sunday because I think it's important to know what Palm Sunday is about, uh, where, it, where it came from. And really, I think more importantly to me is what does Palm Sunday mean for me in 2020 and what God has for me and the places that he's taken me? What does it really mean? What does Palm Sunday really mean? So I'm excited to dive into scriptures today. Um, but before we begin, I just want to pray real quick. Father. Would you come and would you flood every living room, every bedroom, every car, every restroom, wherever we're watching uh, this the service today, God, would you come and would you flood that place? Holy Spirit, we ask that your presence would abide there, that you would bring peace, that you would bring joy, that you would bring everything that you bring when you enter the room. So we welcome you. God, we don't want to have church to be, to be cute, Father. We want to have church because we need to experience you, God. We thank you and we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I was kind of unsure on how to go about with this uh, Palm Sunday because I wanted it to be kind of its own message. And then another part of me was like, do I make this part of like the prepare series? And so as I was studying and going over the text and praying, I really felt like God was sh highlighting and showing me things. Look at this is how it, it this is what it looks like to be prepared, to prepare your faith, to pre prepare who you are. And so as we dive into the scriptures, I want to keep this under the whole prepared series. Um, but uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, I'm gonna, we're going to talk about it in the context of Palm Sunday. And so I'm excited to, to, to dive into this. As I was preparing, uh, I was looking at the Palm story, sun, uh, the Palm Sunday story, and I was thinking, man, it's so interesting how, how it looks like it's one story on the surface, but as you dive in, it's actually completely different story not different so much but there's so much more uh that you can get out of it it's so much deeper than what it actually looks like and it made me think of uh, one of my students just a couple weeks ago before we went on quarantine we were taking a test 
and it's a student I have in my class that um, struggles to do the work. I mean, let's be honest, she doesn't really do the work. Um, she doesn't put forth the effort. I encourage her, I, I help her, I give her as much as I can do. But at a certain point, you're like, I, I can't make you learn. I could, I could give you, try to give you a desire to learn, but you have to learn and want to learn on your own. And so we were doing this test online and I'm, and I'm walking around monitoring different students, but they're taking it on their iPads. And so, you know, these kids many times are better at technology than we are. And even someone like me that prides himself on technology. So she finishes her test online and it's, it's a uh, multiple choice, automatically graded. And she gets an 11 out of 12. And I'm looking at her like, I want to give you the benefit of the doubt. But the other part of me is sitting here saying, yeah, what'd you do? How'd you cheat? Like, did, you know what I mean? I just, my, my mind automatically goes to, so I ask her, I say, hey, tell me the truth. Did you do this on your own? Like, just, I, I just need to know the truth. You're not gonna get in trouble, right? Like you might get a lower grade, but I, I, just, I, I just need to know the truth. Like, are, are, are you cheating or is this what you actually got? She says, no, Mr. Helmsley, I promise. This is, I, 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 I just studied and then I just guessed a couple times and I got them right. In the back of my mind, I'm like, no, you did it. So earlier that class period, she was on her phone, so I took her phone away. So I had her phone up in the front of the classroom. And so it came to the end of the period because it was, it was the end of the period and it was also the, the, the last period of the day. So I usually, if it's a phone, I'll usually hold it to the end of the, end of the day and I'll give it back. But it was, the last end of the, it was the last period of the day. So she comes up to me after class and she says, Mr. Hamilton, can I have my phone back? And then a light bulb went off. And I'm like, I'm gonna bust some 007 stuff right now, right? So she comes in and she's, or she comes up to my desk and she says, Mr. Hamilton, can I have my phone back? And I said, you can have your phone back if you can, if you can, if you can tell me honestly, did you cheat on, on this test? And she's like, no, I didn't cheat. I didn't cheat. I didn't cheat. And I'm looking at her. I was like, listen, you have one more chance before I grab your phone and I go to the office and I give it to the office and they're going to call home and you're going to get in big trouble for having your, having your phone out. And she's like, no, Mr. Hamilton, I promise. I said, look at my eyes. This is your last chance and she's like no i promise mr hamilton i just guessed on a couple but i really did study and i stood up and i said all right fine this is how you want to be this is how this is how it's going to be i grab it and i start walking to the door like as if i'm going to leave and go to the office and i'm like three steps into my power move right like i'm calling your bluff and she says wait 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 wait, wait. i'm sorry i'm sorry 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 okay 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 yes i i i, I cheated i cheated i i, I cheated I, i'm like how'd you cheat and she's like well what's gonna happen to me i'm like well, no matter what, this test is a zero, but I just want to know how you cheated. Otherwise, the phone's going to the office. And she's like, fine, fine. I went on this website, and this website, you put in the problems, and it gives you all the answers, and it tells you, like, it sh shows you how to do every problem. And I was like, you sneaky little student, you. But on the inside, I felt so cool. I was like, I called your bluff. I nailed it. Because I knew there was a story underneath the surface level that she was telling me. Now, I'm not saying that God's a liar, he's a cheater, no, none of that stuff. But there's a story that's underneath Palm Sunday that when we take time to study, we'll be able to see what's really going on. And so I'm excited to unpack this message. So if you have your Bibles, turn to uh, Matthew chapter 21. Matthew chapter 21, verses 1 through 9. I'm going to read this text. And this story, this text, is where we get the Palm Sunday story. And so I'm going to read it. it says, uh, starts on verse 1. Now, when they drew near Jerusalem and came to Beth Bethphage uh, at Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, uh, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord has need of them, and immediately he will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming to you, lowly and sitting on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. So the disciples went and did just uh, and did as Jesus commanded them. They brought the donkey and the colt, laid their clothes on them, and, and set him on them. And a very great multitude spread their clothes on the road. Others cut down branches from the trees and spread them out and spread them on the road. Then the multitudes who went before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Uh, in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And as I was preparing for this message, I kept on, like I said earlier, I kept on tossing back. Is this a prepare message or is this just a Palm Sunday? Let's just get excited. I heard a, a, a pastor say once, he said, if you can't preach 
on, on, on Palm Sunday, on Easter or Christmas, then you are not a, a, a preacher. Those are the easiest Sundays to preach on. And so in my heart, I'm saying, is this like a, a standalone message or is this part of prepare? And, and God began to show some things underneath the surface of what was really going on in the story. So we call this Sunday Palm Sunday because in the story, Jesus is on a donkey and he comes into Jerusalem. Now, when he comes into Jerusalem, he's been to Jerusalem before, but this is the time where he comes in and people are recognizing him as, as, as king. See, kings always came in on an animal and they, and, and they paraded themselves in the city. And so this was Jesus' time to be paraded in saying, hey, I am finally de de declaring in public that I am the king who, have I, who you thought I, I was. I am the Messiah that you, that you thought I was. And the people responded by, chant, by chanting out, by yelling out, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. They're not just chanting random words. They're actually quoting Old Testament um, words that were going to be written about the Messiah, about the promised king. And so all this is happening. And then as he comes in, the people are laying down their clothes in front of him. So he has, he doesn't have to walk, his animal doesn't have to walk on the dirt, but they can walk on these clothes. And then they get the trees and they cut these palm branches off and they place the palm branches there so he can walk on the palm branches. And that's how we get the name Palm Sunday because of the palms that were cut for him. Um, but I want to take us a little bit deeper into the story than just, oh, that's why they call it Palm Sunday. And this was Jesus' time where he came in. Um, this is, he comes in and then on Friday when they have, so like today is Sunday, on Friday they have um, Passover, which we call Good Friday, the day, that, uh, the day that Jesus was crucified, and then he resurrects on Sunday. And so on, on this is his, his final entry into Jerusalem that's going to lead to Passover, that's going to lead to that Last Supper, that's going to lead to him being crucified, and then finally resurrecting at the end. And so I want us to put ourselves in different people's shoes in the story so we can get a better context of really what's going on. The Jewish people often say this, you don't truly understand a scripture until you can put yourself in their shoes. Once you can put yourself in their shoes, then you're truly beginning to understand scripture. Um, so let, let's just for a moment, let's just try to live in the story. Now, people often say, oh, these people are chanting out, Hosanna, right? Like you are the king, like this is who you are. And then those same people, we see them on, on, on Friday when Jesus is crucified. They're the same people that were chanting, crucify him, crucify him. And so we see this, this two, two kind of um, sides of, of, the, of the human soul. At one moment, we can be cheering, God, you are so good. God, you are awesome. And in that same week, be chanting, man, God, like, you're, 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 you're not even who you said you are. I thought you were going to do A, B, and C, and that's not even what happened. And we see the human condition here in one, in one, kind, of, one kind of series with Palm Sunday and then with Good Friday where He's coming in and people are cheering his name. And then by the end of that, of that week, they're, they're chanting, crucify him, crucify him, a.k.a. this. He's not our king. They're starting by saying he is our king and they're ending by saying he's not even a king and he's definitely not our king. But let's for a moment, let's let's just pretend our minds don't know what happens when they when instead of them yelling crucify. Let's just stay in the moment where they believe that he's the king. And let's put ourselves in this in, in, in this in this uh, in the story. And so we start, the story starts by them coming to a city called Beth, Bethphagi, so make sure I say it right, Bethphagi, which literally means this, unripened, unripened olive or un unripened fruit. And so it's interesting that as Jesus is going to his, as his last parade into Jerusalem, he stops at a city that's called this unripened, AKA this, it's not ready yet. And Jesus decides to stop there and then he's there. It's almost as if God's saying, I know some of you guys aren't ready, but even though you're not ready, I'm still good enough to get your not readiness to be ready. And so some of us came into the season feeling not ready. And God is saying, no, 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 if I'm in your midst, you may feel unripened. You may feel not ready. You may feel unqualified. But I need you to know something that if I'm in the midst of your story, you may feel the, 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 the degrees that you have may say or the degrees that you don't have may say that you're not ready. The fruit that you have may say that's not ready. But God is saying that if I'm in your story, I'm going to make you ready as long as you stick with me. So they come to the city. That's literally mean unripened. And then as they come, we see here at the beginning in uh, verse, uh, verse 2, Jesus says this. Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. So donkey meaning the mother donkey, and then her colt, which is a babyish donkey, with her. They're going to be tied there. And then the scriptures say, loose them and bring them to me. 
If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, the Lord has need of them, and immediately he will send this. And as I, and as I read this story, I, I, I just get caught up on the fact that there was this donkey that was in a village. He doesn't even name the name of the village. He just says, hey, you two go to that village over there. And when you go over there, you'll find a donkey and a colt. They'll be tied up. I need you to loose those, those, that a donkey and her colt because I have need of them. And if somebody's questioning you, just tell them, hey, the Lord has need of these. And then the, the Bible says that they'll, they'll, they'll let them go. That, yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll come to Jesus. And as I'm reading this, I can't help but picture us in 2020 in quarantine season. Some of us have literally felt tied up, felt alone and depressed, anxious, uncertain, frustrated maybe we were excited at the beginning but now it's just building up and we don't know what's going to happen and it's like how many more days of this can we take and because we've been so uh, in the un in the uncertain realm and we've been anxious and depressed and frustrated and angry and you know at first we were trying to make the best of it but now we're grouchy and now we're all these different emotions that we aren't usually maybe we've been caught up on the news and we've been caught up with work and we've been trying to figure everything out and our kids studies and all this and we've lost what God has created us for. We have lost what we were purposed on this earth for. And it's as if the Spirit of God is speaking right now and he's saying to stop, 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 stop. Be loosed in Jesus' name. That fear that's been binding you, I, I, I need you to be loosed right now in Jesus' name because I have need of you. Yeah, yeah, that, that depression that's just been holding on for years, that all of a sudden just sparked up because now you're in this, in this enclosed area, be loosed in Jesus' name because I have need of you. Some have had this anxiety that's just been on and off, on and off, and the anxiety has been coming on because everything seems like it's out of your control. God is saying this to you right now from heaven. Be loosed in Jesus' name because I have need of you. There is ministry to be done in your families. There is ministry to be done in your homes. There is ministry to be done with your friends who you have influence in. And, and God is saying this. Don't be so caught up. I need you right now to hear from heaven. Be loosed in Jesus' name. And God says this, because I have need of you. There's something that I need of you. I just, the, 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 the Lord has need of you. And <clears throat> some people might say, well, I mean, God, if he really knew me, he really, really wouldn't want to use me because of my shortcomings, because of my mess ups, because of my mistakes. And if I'm 100% honest, I have never doubted that God wanted to use me. Wow, Sean, that's really cocky. No, no, no. Like, I've just never doubted that he wanted to use me. I did doubt that he wanted to use me in any kind of significant way. All right, God, what do you like? Yeah, God, I'll go to church and I will do tear down. I will do set up, God. I will clean the restrooms. I mean, maybe like if you see it in your heart, God, like I'll lead a Bible study, God. But that's about the extent of my abilities, God. Like just, just, just calm down with all your big words, God. Like I, I, I know you can use anybody, but you'll use those people that are skilled first. And then if there's any room left over, if there's any jobs that are left over, God, then sure, I'll, I'll fill in whatever role that you have and maybe you can I, I identify with that like Sean like I, I know God's good and I know God will use me I just don't know if he'll use me the same way he uses somebody else man there was a donkey who was in an unnamed village who was tied up aka this not being used who had no purpose had no meaning just felt like it was just a normal day and God knew right where that donkey was it wasn't a mystery to Jesus. It didn't say that someone sent Jesus a letter. Hey, don't forget there's a donkey that's really bored that could use a purpose and a meaning. No, 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 no. Jesus already before knew the donkey was there. It knew that it was tied up and in, he knew that he needed to loose it, have those disciples loose it so that way it can come and fulfill the purpose that it was created for, to have the savior of the universe on its shoulders, on its back, carrying him in to this holy week. Listen, you may feel unqualified. You may feel like, well, I'll do something, but not anything great or amazing. Listen, God has a way of taking things that feel insignificant and using them to do something incredible. I don't know how. I don't know why. I don't know. It's just something in his heart where he's like, I love using the things that seem like they're meaningless and making them show how meaningful they really are. And so if you feel inadequate on the inside, man, may you hear from heaven today and pick your head up because there's a God in heaven who sees you, who knows right where you're at and who says this, I have need of you. Man, it's Palm Sunday. It's time to get excited because God is in the midst. He's in your room. He's in your living room. He's in your car. He's wherever you're listening to this word right now. And he's speaking to you. I can use you. Well, I'm only like, I only, I only just do taxes, you know, and I just do this. No, 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 no. 
be loose from that mindset right now. I have need of you. Well, I'm just a stay at home mom. Like I don't really, I mean, no, 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 no. Be loose of that mindset right now. I have need of you. Well, I'm just a teacher and I'm working at home right now. No, 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 get, get loose of that mindset right now. I have need of you. Well, I mean, I, 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 I just work in a warehouse. I'm just, you know, like I do work, I work in a forklift. I just do, no, 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 get rid of that mindset. Be loosed right now in Jesus' name. God has need of you. God isn't looking at your titles and your degrees and saying, oh, great, I can really use you here. No, no, no. He designed you and created you with purpose up on the inside of you. And it's calling it out of you because the world may have tried to bury it, but he's trying to uncover it in your life to help you realize, man, I have need of you. I created you for a purpose on purpose. I have so much need for you. Yeah, I spent half my time on verse two. Let's go. Hurry up. Stop. You guys are asking too many questions. Just calm down over there. And so uh, they, they, they get this colt, right? And so they get the donkey, they get the colt, and they bring it in. And now Jesus is going to ride on this colt into the city for the first time. That he's making this public declaration saying, I truly am the king that I said I am, a.k.a. that I'm really the Messiah. I come to fulfill. Now, he comes riding in on a colt, on a donkey, which says this. If a king came into a, into a, a city and he was riding in on a horse... It said this about the, the time that they were in. They were in a time of war. He was on a horse and he needed to be ready for war. But if a king ever came in on a donkey, he was saying this, I'm coming in a time of peace. I don't need to be on a horse right now. I can be in a donkey and so be at ease. There's peace right now. So Jesus, to fulfill the Old Testament, but also to, know and to let them know in what way he is coming, he comes in on a donkey and he says this, I'm coming in peace coming in grace. I'm coming in humility. Yeah, I'm not coming to, to condemn you. I'm not coming to judge you right now. In fact, I'm coming to bring peace to your souls. See, some of us have so much turmoil on the inside, so much angst on the inside, so much everything's just kind of rubbing up against each other right now on the inside. And I know I'm made for more, but I just, I, I'm just, I just, I feel bad and I feel guilty and I feel ashamed and I should be better and I'm not better. He came in on a donkey to say this. Man, may there be peace in your soul. May there be peace within you. I'm coming in I'm coming in grace. I'm coming in truth. I'm not coming to condemn and to judge you right now. This first coming is coming in grace and peace. And the interesting thing is that he came in on a colt because he needed to come in on an animal that had never been ridden before. But if an animal has never been ridden before, that means that it's wild, it's crazy, it's untamed. It's as if Jesus is saying, I use things that are wild, that are untamed, that aren't qualified, that don't look like they're good enough, that, man, you should be using someone more experienced. God's like, I like using things that are unused. I like using things that their resume shows that they're unqualified so that way I can show how good I really am. And so I'm not saying if you're successful, God can't use you. But what I am saying is this, God wants to use you in ways where your previous track record does not show everybody that, oh yeah, you could also do this. If you're successful in one area, God wants to use you in a completely different area. So he still gets the glory because, and the whole point of the story, can I, can I break you, break this down from Christianity to from the American dream? Can I separate them for a real moment? People want to think that it's all about us. But the Palm Sunday story isn't about the donkey. The Palm Sunday story is about Jesus. So don't get it twisted. Though Jesus loves you with all of everything that he has, though he has a plan and a purpose for you, the story is still about him. We're the ones that are on the bottom. He's the one that's on our back and we're the one that's lifting him as high as we can. So that way people can point to him and they could say, Hosanna. There is the king. There truly is the son of David. So don't get it twisted. You're not, Jesus isn't on all fours and you're not on his back and he's not lifting you up so the show's about you. On the contrary, you're on, you're on all fours, you're trotting and he's on your back because the show's all about, all about him. I mean, come on somebody. So we continue with the story. They start chanting, like I said, they start chanting that he's the king. They're quoting the Old Testament. And I want to jump over to Luke as we finish our message today. And the same story, the same, the same Palm Sunday story is in all four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And in the Gospel of Luke, after they quote the Old Testament, the, the, um, the Jesus and his Pharisees, Pharisees are these like religious leaders um, that kind of just believe the Bible and they don't believe Jesus is the Messiah. They have this kind of interaction real quick. So if you have your Bibles, Luke chapter 19, verse 38, it says this, Blessings on the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. But some, so that's them chanting, verse 39. 
But some of the Pharisees among the crowd said, Teacher, rebuke your followers for saying things like that. He replied, If they keep quiet, the stones along the road would burst out into cheers. I want to title this message, If They Keep Quiet. If They Keep Quiet. I'm talking about being prepared and what happens when our preparedness, when we were expecting a joyful um, welcoming to our, our stepping out in faith if they keep if they keep quiet. Now I've heard this scripture um, preached by different by different preachers and they'll say things like this. Man, I'm never gonna let a stone or a rock out praise me. Like far be it, a rock has never has never tasted salvation, a rock has never been forgiven of their sins, a rock has never been healed, a rock has never been restored. I will never let a rock out praise me come on i mean you know and it gets you going it gets you hyped up and i think that's a appropriate way to see the scripture and I, I i i've preached that before and i've heard it preached and man like it connected me to the heart of god so i'm not saying that's wrong but i want to look at it from a different context for a moment have you ever stepped out in faith i'm talking about being prepared and what palm sunday says about being prepared have you ever been trying to prepare for something you got your faith locked in on something and you stepped out in faith and as you stepped out in faith, you were waiting for a sign from heaven. God, if this is you, then God, let three red cars pass by right now. In Jesus' name. One, two, three. Hi, it was you. Three red cars. Thank you, Lord. That's all I needed. I'll see you later. Or like, oh, God, God I, I just need a sign. I, I just need to like open my Bible and for you to say, this is the right path, Sean. Like, you know, like, and sometimes we have, we have our faith where, or God, God, if I step out in faith, if I go to my spouse, my wife, or my husband, and if I ask for forgiveness, then a sign that we're supposed to stay together is that they respond and say, I forgive you, and I'm also sorry for what I did. God, that's the sign that I'm looking for. God, I, I need some positiveness, some positive vibes in my life when I step out in faith, God, so I know it's you. And I want to take us a look just for a few moments at Jesus' prepared faith that he had. Look at this faith. Look what he says here in verse 39. But some of the Pharisees among the crowd said, Teacher, rebuke your followers for saying things like that. In other words, Jesus, tell these people to be quiet because they think you're the Messiah. And we know you're not the Messiah. So tell them to be quiet. AKA this. Jesus, you just stepped out in faith and told all these people that you're the Messiah. You're not the Messiah. These people are cheering your name. But you're not the Messiah. Tell them the truth. Tell them that you're not the Messiah. Tell them the truth. And he says this. If they kept quiet, man, the stones along the road would burst out into cheers. Look at the prepared faith he has. This is what it shows me, that he came in and said this. If I'm on a donkey and if I ride into the city and if there's not one soul cheering for my name, if I ride on this donkey and there's not a person to be seen, everybody's gone but me and this donkey, if it's just us, as I come riding in, I'm convinced that I don't need one soul cheering me on. My faith is so prepared. I know Know exact I know that I'm doing exactly what God has called me to do that if not one person says hey good job hey yeah that's you you are you you, you are right you are the king good job yeah if not one person says it, then I'm believing the impossible that even a rock would go ahead and cry out because I am so convinced that I'm doing exactly what God has created me to do I heard from heaven I heard from father and I'm gonna do it when we're talking about being prepared in 2020 there's gonna be some areas where God's gonna say this I need you to step out in faith and there may not be one person chanting your name. Good move. Good. I like how you stepped out in faith there. Yep, that's God. That's 100% God. It's got to be God. Don't worry. There might not be one person cheering for you. There not be, it might be one person clapping from you. But when you have a prepared faith, you'll say things like this. Even if everybody kept quiet, man, I'm believing that the impossible will still happen. A rock will go ahead and cry out because I know who I am and I know what he said about me and I know what he spoke to me and I know what the word says. And if the word says it, then I'm going to believe that he's going to do it. Man, if they kept quiet, then the rocks would have to cry out because I, my, my faith is so prepared. It's so convinced that I'm willing to step out even if I hear nobody cheering for me. Man, in this quarantine season, may your faith be so built up that you can walk out of this quarantine season with the faith that says, man, if nobody, if nobody cries out, man, then something's gonna, a rock's gonna happen. The impossible will have to happen because I'm so convinced that what God said, he's gonna do. Even if nobody believes me, even if nobody feels it on the inside either, man, I am so convinced about what God said and I'm gonna believe his promises. Some of you are the only Christians in your family. 
Man, may you be so convinced in this season. Man, may you fall so in love. May you learn his voice in such a way where you're saying, man, even if no one else believes me, man, these rocks are gonna start crying out because I know that I know that I know that this is what, this is what God said he's gonna do. Man, uh, man so I hope, that, I hope that ministers to your soul that even if people keep quiet, man, may you have a prepared faith that says, I'm gonna do it anyway. I don't need people's approval to walk out my faith. I have faith in God all by myself. And so the last two scriptures here uh, in, in, in Matthew, they finish after this whole exchange. Then Jesus goes to the temple. And as he goes to the temple, uh, he sees people selling animals. And he gets, this is the story where he starts throwing over tables and he gets the mad. And he said, my house will not be this den of thieves. And what he said, the reason why he gets so mad is because they're heading into Passover. And so what happened at the temple is they were supposed to have the animals so they could have their, their, their Passover meal. They could, they could buy the sheep and they could buy the doves and they were gonna have this Passover meal. But what happened is in the temple, these Pharisees and these people who were in there, they got so greedy that they ch started charging more money because they knew people had to buy their animals. And so they said, let's make a quick buck by raising the price of these sheep and these doves so we make more money. And Jesus comes in and says, I'm coming for the very reason to prove to you that forgiveness is free. That forgiveness is not going to cost you anything and it costs me everything. And you're trying to make a buck off of forgiveness and salvation. And so he begins to throw, temp uh, throw these, these tables in the temple because he's so mad. Because he's literally coming to make sure that the people receive the free gift. And the Pharisees are in here charging for a free gift. And so he gets mad. He gets upset. He throws tables over. And then he says this uh, in Matthew 21 verse 13. He says, and he said to them, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer but you have made it, made it a den of thieves. And as I read this, I felt like God was saying this. I want to make my house a house of prayer. Okay, well, Sean, well, we don't have the church right now, so I guess we'll have to wait till quarantine's over. No, we're gonna, we're gonna pray right now. It was one of my hopes and one of my beliefs, actually, that during this season, this quarantine season, we would learn how to have church at home on days that didn't rhyme with, with Sunday that we would have church on other days besides Sunday, on Mondays and Tuesdays and Wednesdays and Thursdays and Fridays and Saturdays. And it wouldn't have to be a pastor having church in your home, but that you would end up having worship on Mondays and on Thursdays and on Wednesdays sometimes and on a Saturday and on a Friday night and on a Tuesday morning. And you would just have times of worship or you would just put on a message or you would just dive into your word. And, and I think one aspect of, of church that God desperately needs in your house is, is, is prayer. Well, Sean, I pray for my food. I mean, it's kind of weird. Like, we don't, we don't really pray together, Sean. It's not really what we do. I know it's not really what you do, but if you want to get new results, you got to do something new now. If you want a new marriage, you got to do something new now. If you want different results in your family and your kids and in your work, you got to do something different now. And what better season than now to start changing your home atmosphere? And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we're gonna have a time of prayer right now. So we're gonna spend a few minutes praying, and I want us to, um, we're gonna put up different prayer points on your screen uh, and I want us to have a moment so if we could all stand together I want you guys to stand and as you stand I want you to lock hands as a family now whether that means um, your, your young ones if you're you have young ones like me like the one-year-old you know she'll hold hands for about four seconds and then she'll want to like beat up somebody but um, if you have older ones or you know the, the, the time this meant isn't meant that everybody is quiet and everyone has to be reverent and everyone no no this time is meant for this, that you would begin to introduce prayer into your homes as a family. If you're by yourself, then lock hands with yourself and believe for a spouse. No, I'm just kidding. Lock hands with yourself or lock hands with just you and your spouse. Lock hands with you and your spouse. If you have kids, lock hands with your kids for as long as they'll let you hold their hand. And I, and I want us to make this normal in our homes. And what better way than to model it um, here on, on, on a church on a Palm Sunday morning. So let's lock hands. And we're going to begin praying for this. I want us to first by start praying for our immediate family that you have right there with you that you're holding hands with. Now, if you're praying for yourself and pray, if you're by yourself, then pray for your, your, your family that's, that's in maybe in different homes around you. Um, but I want to pray for, for our families. And so let's go ahead and pray for a few moments for everyone's hand that you're holding. Everyone can pray at the same time or if, or, or if a mom wants to lead or if dad wants to lead this time, then let's go ahead and pray. But let's not have everyone quiet and just awkward. Let's begin to pray. Like, Sean, well, how do I pray? Pray as if God's really in the room. Pray as if God's real. Like you're just having a conversation with God and you're concerned about some things and you want to let him know what those things are. 
And so let's go ahead and take uh, one minute and let's and let's pray for our, our, our family that's there. Father, I thank you so much for family. Father, thank you that it was your plan and it was your idea. And so, Father, we thank you for the husbands and the wives and the sons and the daughters and the brothers and the sisters that are, that are here in our families, God. God, would you keep them disease and virus-free in Jesus' name? If any of our loved ones, our immediate family, have already, have already um, have some kind of sickness or disease, Father, right now in Jesus' name, we say disease, leave their body. Body, be whole in Jesus' name. Be healed from head to toe right now. Father, we thank you that you have given us all authority and all power. Father, we thank you so much for these ones that we get to hold hands with, God. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. I want us to pray um, for, for our, our, our city that we're in. So let's begin to pray for our city that you find yourself, wherever you find yourself. Go ahead and begin praying for your city. Father, I thank you so much for these cities that, that we live in. Father, may we be a light in the city. As you taught in the, in the gospel stories, may we not try to hide our light, Father, but may our light be put on a hill so that way so many can see who our God is. God, would you bring salvation to our cities? Father, would no one be left out from, the, from those that people view as the lowest to those that people view as, 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 as having the most? God, would everybody come to know you as their, as their Savior, God, we thank you and we love you. We're going to take a few moments and let's pray for our home, the actual home that we, that we live in. Let's pray for this home. Father, would you, Father, would you come in and would you protect our home from any disease, Father, from any, from any pestilence, from any plague, from any virus that tries to come in the, through the doors of our home. We command that virus. You must stay out in Jesus' name because we are not like everybody else. We don't have, we don't have the same covenant like everybody else. We have a covenant with the King of Kings and with the Lord of Lords. And so we are a special people. We are a special treasure to God. And so virus, leave in Jesus' name. You are not allowed to come through the doorposts of our homes and, of, and, and in our households and in our apartments and wherever we find ourselves, you are not allowed to come in. So we command you to leave and never come in in Jesus' name. Amen. And the last thing I want to pray for is, is, our, is, our, is our nation and the world. So would you begin to pray for the U.S. that God would bring healing power to our country and to the world um, as well.
Father, we pray for healing in the United States, God. Would you come and would you bring wholeness and healing to every person that is hurting, both with the sickness and both with grief and both with fear, God? Would you, the only way that you can, would you be close to the brokenhearted? Father, would you be the same one who, who casts out sickness and disease in Jesus' name? Would you, would, would you do what only you can do? Holy Spirit, would you comfort those that need comforting? Father, would you would, would you would you would you begin to heal those that need healing? Would you begin to give hope to those that need hope? Would you begin to give peace to those that need peace in this situation, God? Not only in our country, but worldwide. God, would the whole world come to know you? Would this event that was meant for evil, God, would you turn it around? Would you use it for good? Would this be a great awakening, God, where we would come and realize that we need a God? We need you. We don't need little lowercase g gods. We need you. King of the universe, capital G, God, we need you, God. We thank you and we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Church family, it is so amazing to be with you on Palm Sunday. May you realize that you serve the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And may prayer be, be a part of your home. And every day, would you lock hands with a family or as a married couple or as an individual and begin to pray every day in your home. May church just not happen on a Sunday, but may it happen every day right where you live. Amanda and I love you guys so much. We cannot wait, wait, wait to be with you guys, to squeeze you, to hug you, to tell you guys how much we, we, we love you guys. Um, but until then, keep being the church. Know this, that God said this about you. Be loosed. I have need of you. We love you guys, and we will see you soon.